Hello, welcome to part three of three part lecture series. First part I had talked about quantum effects and in the second lecture I had talked about origin of life and today this is a part three I'm going to talk about consciousness. My name is Sangam Banerjee and my details are given below. These figures I had explained in lecture one. This is your low temperature refrigerator which goes to 20 millikelvin very low and these are the qubits and this was discussed uh, in uh, lecture one and in second lecture I had discuss about origin of life and today the third lecture we are going to talk about brain activities. This is the third lecture on brain, neurons and consciousness. So here I show these brain activities and here I show neurons. And this is the axon and how the action potential propagates and goes through synapses here. So two neurons can talk through synapses. So we start with nervous system. So nervous system has two parts, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system consists of brain and the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system there is a ganglion and then there are nerve fibers and these nerve fibers communicate with the brain through the spinal. We will discuss this in more detail in next few slides. So nervous system as I said you have central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. This central nervous system brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system the are called peripheral nerves they are cranial and spinal and they communicate between uh, central nervous system and body as I had mentioned earlier and this peripheral nervous system is again divided into two parts called sensory efferent division that is it senses say skin or uh, you see through eye or you smell and then there is a motor efferent division so sensory composed of sensory neurons conduct signal from receptors to brain central nervous system and motor composed of motor neurons they they are neurons which is uh, important for uh, moving muscle and all so it conducts signal from brain to the effectors okay so what it means efferent neurons are this from skin it is coming and these are efferent neurons okay it carries this motor information from brain to peripheral nervous system it comes here and this is a muscle so this is your somatic uh, division Okay, which is uh, your brain says you are conscious about it is a voluntary movement and uh, you have some involuntary thing also which brain sends to dilate blood vessel and all these are called autonomic it happens automatically you don't have to think to you know heartbeat of or breathing you don't have to think it does automatic so in this motor where you breathe the heart is beating this motor thing again you subdivide into two this is autonomic nervous system which controls involuntary and then there is a somatic nervous system which controls voluntary it means you think about it that I want to move the hand the hand moves and the signal goes through the efferent neurons to the muscle and your hand moves we are will be more interesting in this autonomic nervous system because this is the one which actually give rise to uh, thought process and all which we will see so this also controls you know your say um, your uh, function of liver and kidneys which you which you do not know it does it automatic and uh, this uh, is further divided into sympathetic division and parasympathetic division that is sympathetic means it mobilizes body system is like flight or fight responses which we will discuss this in more detail and then you have a parasympathetic division this conserves energy and this is done during rest and digest response. So in next uh, slide I have shown here this is parasympathetic nervous system okay through spinal cord this through ganglion this nerve comes and it, it controls these organs and also there is a sympathetic this is when you are in danger okay so your say eyes will pop up it will dilate your pupil or it will your tongue will get dry or your heartbeat will accelerate okay you will just take strong breathing to get more air and it will have a problem with digestion okay and then your liver also gets affected and this is when you are at rest and digesting this is a parasympathetic thing and you it does it in a normal it stimulates flow of saliva slow heartbeat huh? constricts bronchi you don't have to breathe you know it here dilates but here it is normal and again your say, digestion and this liver functions so these are the thing but all these things does automatic okay you don't have to uh, as soon as you see some very dangerous thing of course your heartbeat will increase enough you don't increase your heartbeat knowingly but it automatically 
automatically happen. So there are reasons for such things. And this is uh, happens because of your evolutionary process. The nature has given you such thing which you don't have to worry. And nature takes care and nature wants to keep you survive. So here you see these neurons which are there, these nerve fibers here these are and there are myelin sheet, these are insulating sheet. It is like cable you see these wires are there. They are action potential or ion ions flow charges. So like a current okay you have charge means it is. So these are like cable you see and these cables goes from say from eye to your brain and so and so forth. So neurons communicate via both electrical and chemical signals. Now this uh, peripheral nervous system from different region of the spinal cord it spreads. So this top part you know cervical here it goes to the head and then your thoracic part okay so it goes to your chest part then your lumbar it goes to the leg okay so these are different region where from here connection goes to different part of your body. So brain is three tire brain you have a prefrontal cortex then limbic this is a mammalian and this is your you know prehistoric reptilian brain and this focus attention self control compassion free will judgment planning. So it is believed that this part of the brain does all this and this limbic part people believe is for emotion memory and your reptilian brain is somewhere here basic body function uh, reptiles and all they work from here but uh, this is for the mammal. So all your emotions, pain, all this stuff is localized here. It is people have done some experiment and they have found these three layers of brain. The top part is called the cerebral cortex and it has two hemispheres, left hemisphere and right hemisphere. It has been found that different, this two part, uh, left part uh, manages language, logic, maths and uh, so on. And even right also have some emotions, sensory. Okay, These are few things, just freeze and go through it. So as we go on, these things will be will become more clear, clearer. So this is an anatomy of a brain. So here we have labeled the various brain parts. So this is your frontal part. Okay. This is your parietal lobe. This is occipital lobe. So these are labeled like this. I am not going to read all of them. This is a cerebellum and this is called pons and this is medulla oblonga. This is very important thing. So up to here there was some reptilian kind of thing and then of course you have a mammalian brain inside this portion. So anyway the glossary of terms let me go through important ones. This is called amygdala which is here inside. Okay. This is emotion learning learning then cerebellum this is your cerebellum here this is this governs the movement then you have this cingulate gyrus process conscious emotional this is what people believe in frontal lobe muscle movement uh, so if you damage this part your muscle movement will stop so then people think okay this portion of the brain governs the muscle movement mood planning so there are you see similar region have many function setting goals judging then hippocampus is a long term memory so you have a hippocampus here it is believed to have a long term memories then this is phonics Okay, it is here, connects hippocampus to other part of the limbic system. Then you have medulla oblongata, which controls heart rate. They are involuntary kind of action. It does respiration, blood pressure, swallowing. And I think it also does some involuntary action in the brains, which we will see, which can give rise to thoughts and so and so forth. Then you have limbic systems, okay, emotion, learning, memory. Then you have this occipital lobe here, okay, for visual information. Then you have this peri hippocampal gyrus this connecting pathway to limbic system okay here it is then you have parietal lobe just uh, have a look where you can freeze it and just go through it then your parietal lobe temperature taste touch reading so these are different portion of the brain and they have specific function then use your pons is here somewhere then temporal lobe is somewhere here then you have a thalamus is somewhere inside brain deep inside the brain so thalamus is also one of the major relay station so it does you know it takes information from your body, send it what is to be done, uh, compute, then it gives the output back to the body. So thalamus is a relay station between senses and the cortex. So senses means seeing, touching and the brain, this cortex. Okay. So if you take a cross section here, the, this section has been cut, here it is shown. So you have, you know, the outer region is dense with neurons and you have these are called gray matter there are more density of neurons and you have white matter and they are connecting different 
parts of the brain. So here white matter is composed of bundle of myelinated, myelinated means they are insulated axon which connects the various grey matter region together and myelin act as an insulator and hence nerve signals are transmitted at greater speed through white matter. Okay, So the nerve signals are transmitting without leakage. So they go from one portion of the brain to the another portion and grey matter is composed of neuronal cell bodies and dendrites as well as unmelanated nerve fibers. Grey matters function as a region of brain where information is processed. So here informations are processed. Then you have ventricular system. So ventricular system has nothing but the, this this is this is the ventricles of the brain. Okay, and these things are dipped in or covered with some fluid. This is called cerebrospinal fluid. Even this is uh, dipped in the cerebrospinal fluid. So these are, these are different uh, uh, part of the internal brain. This is very special for the mammalian. So as I said, you have two parts where processing does is called the cerebrum. Initiates coordinated movement and regulates temperature, speech, intelligence, memory. So this part is the cerebrum part. And this is cerebrum. This is posture adjustment, you know, balancing, precision, coordination, timing. So please freeze and go through this what I have written. Maybe I may not be reading the whole thing. And I have written it so that I don't forget while uh, giving this talk. So there are three main types of neurons. So these are the neurons. You see this is cell body. It's a single cell and axon is quite long and it senses and this is your afferent uh, nerves which brings the signal from the sense organ and it takes it to the brain and from brain you have a motor neutron so what action has to be taken and uh, this is muscle has to be moved or you have to open your eye and in between they are connected to this brain a nerve cell here these are called interneurons are only found in the central nervous system within the brain and spinal cord and are situated between sensory and motor neurons. So these are the intermediate interneurons. So here I have pictorially in a linear fashion I have shown this is a stimulus. It comes. Okay. This is the afferent neuron as I said. Then it goes to this intermediate uh, interneurons. Okay. Which is inside the brain. It joins the thalamus and from the cortex there is a nerve which joins this neuron. So you say that this is the first order neuron. Then there is a second order neuron and this is the third order which goes finally to the cortex to compute and to take the decision and again similarly in a there will be from cortex it will come to thalamus and then it, there will be a, another neuron which will come to the spinal cord and from spinal cord then another efferent this is efferent neuron then you will have efferent neuron to the this is your efferent neuron which go to muscle okay now structure of nerve cells this is a neuron so you see here this is the neuron so these are called the dendrite this is a cell body of course it is a cell that's why it has mitochondria and then there are microtubules and this is called the axon and this is the dendrite and there is a synapsis here and they transport neurotransmitters here inside inside a vesicle and they are transported along the microtubule and as we have shown in our earlier class this vesicle comes with the cell wall and it opens up and releases the neurotransmitter these are the receptors for the neurotransmitter so it goes to another synapses okay so this is how the signal passes so now let me change the gear a bit and now we'll talk about experiencing a pain so experience a pain you have three different uh, system the somatosensory system the afferent system and the cognitive system. So somatosensory system is from the site of the injury to thalamus via spinal cord it comes and then so this is your somatosensory cortex and uh, this is your uh, thalamus here. So it comes to thalamus and then it sends a signal and it asks whether there should be a pain or not. So decision is been made. So these are some interesting thing which we are going to talk in later slides and uh, it is thought that this also this part this anterior cingulate cortex here this part is also responsible for realizing pain so here i say this cognitive system decide whether or not the pain is going to receive attention now there are latest technology called deep brain stimulation by pharmacology by some drug or optogenetic that is manipulating circuit in specific area of the brain through laser they do it to eliminate pain including psychological pain. So they manipulate inside the brain where sometimes some patients have severe pain like when they suffer from cancer and to reduce the pain they can do some uh, invasive uh, treatment and manipulate some portion of the brain. So one can divide pain into two categories that is pain that can be relieved by opiates. These opiates are the drugs which you get from opium that is 
dealing with somatosensory system. So opiates are made from opium and are addictive. So one can then try antidepressants. Suppose pain is not going, so if you it is not if you continue, then the person becomes addictive. So people, some doctors use antidepressant and pain that cannot be relieved by medicine by opiates. Then you do what I said, deep brain stimulus, Neuralink, which is going to come soon in future. So you know what Neuralink is. Anyway, I will come to it in next few slides. So here I say my. Mindfulness, that is mind controlling pain may be true. So meditation may not be a hoax. It works. Some experiment have proved it. So here I say it is evident that among child in pain, the pain can be distracted with a toy. So you show a child a toy, so he forgets the pain. So by distraction you can do. So meditation is also like some sort of your concentrating, your distracting from pain. And uh, this is, but it requires practice. So you have to focus attention on something. Example on breathing relieves anxiety. So people have measured that when you focus attention on breathing it releases you know these alpha waves are the feel good factor wave you feel these are low frequency wave brain is in relaxed and idle condition and monitoring brain that is willfully dismiss the sensation so this happens actually for soldiers and all that is brain controlling the brain this requires practice so some persons can willfully dismiss this pain sensation so this is a brain map here i have shown the amount of this gray matter uh, is devoted to the part of the body. So this is mapped here. See, this is more for this. For finger, you have to manipulate. So more portion of the brain is dedicated to finger, uh, skin, hair, touch, this portion of the body. For tongue also it is or lips and so forth depending on how much important it is. The brain has so much more amount of gray matter. Okay. And here you see for epilepsy patient, you have some seizure hotspot and people are, you know, doing some kind of a procedure here at this spot to get rid of the epilepsy seizure. Okay. So as I said that now a lot of research is going on making this brain chip where you can send some electrical signal and manipulate the brain signal. So sometimes it helps in the case of paralysis or some other diseases and these are the size, the size of the chip is too small. This is a finger, on finger you see too small, these are the chips, so these are the electrode and uh, you connect it to a connector and this is screwed on the skull and the leads, the electrical leads are being taken from here. Okay. So this is a socket and also now people passes called stentrode through the vein up to the brain here and here also there are softwares who take care what signal to send when for people who have some problem in walking. So these also are under experiments and here you see you know the, some animation I have shown here that how you get the sense of touch. So from here there are wiring which goes to your brain and you can feel that which finger he is touching and here through mind see this is a connector which I said there is a plug which I had shown earlier with a socket and it goes to a computer and through mind there is a this called EEG electroencephalograph some receiver is there which catches the brain signal and you train the computer this uh, brain signal so here a paralyzed woman moving a water bottle with her mind okay so this also you can see it in internet okay now let me tell you something about deep learning. This is one of the main thing in artificial intelligence and this works with feed forward algorithm that is it only goes for in forward direction but brain doesn't work it has a feedback mechanism also it goes back also and is a non-linear algorithm, algorithm. So here you see you have a array of this pixel and suppose you this pixels are lighted this is 28 by 28 pixel which is 784 so for each pixel these are the point and you can train so if this is a figure then you can connect all of them this each point to all of this and the signal passes and these are the hidden layers and wherever signal passes more whichever gets lighted here so it remembers you put it in a memory and then with this combination of the signal then you decide okay this is figure so it's something like a pattern recognition okay so here also if you have a pixel here suppose the cat and once you show you can train it and in a data bank he has all kind of uh, pixel so he matches which pixel and then if the matching is done it will say cat or a dog okay so of course you have to train it the 
more you train the better it is so it keeps on learning and this is what i had said this is a input neuron and you have hidden neuron here and then and these are the weight factors for suppose this and this and this neuron fires so it goes here it goes here so these get weighted others don't get much weight and so similarly once you know the pattern of the weight so you know what you are going to see okay but here i say that brain consciously recognizes due to learning expectation we have attention resonance that it strikes and then synchrony so these are the things brain but these are more simplified model of the neural network but this is what at present people are using so next is brain decoding and imaging reconstruction from functional magnetic resonance fmri activity so you see here and you have a uh, some signal coming and of course you can deconvolute it some frequency it will, you can deconvolute it and then again you put it in the bank and whatever you have a fingerprint of each signal and then you can say okay what this image is okay is this chimpanzee or not but it is still in the primitive stage here you see is seeing the fish but this is a image generated after learning for long time this is end to a deep image reconstruction from human brain activity okay so this has been done so this is to certain extent these are some of the thing this is a fish it is not very good this is a plane it is also there is some mirrors or a car so this is still in a primitive stage so this is the image reconstruct from human brain activity so here we will see how the brain signal which goes to you her arm and she willfully bends it and from here you have a sensor which can carry the electrical signal and it has been fixed to this boy and when she is moving her hand willfully and he also automatically gets the signal and his hand also moves okay so how to control someone else arm with your brain so she is actually indirectly controlling his arm so now we here we try to understand a bit further that you have this brain activity and you have a pick up coils okay electromagnetic signals which comes you amplify it and you get this signal these are captured from the brain the activities and these are this is called electroencephalography okay eeg so this eeg signal comes and this signal also like what is your mood so depending on upon your if you are in sleepy state you have very slow electromagnetic pickups signals are there and then if you are drowsy this is a and if you are solving you are thinking too much some concentrating it is very high frequency this is busy day to day walking and all this is restful okay these are the alpha waves so these are different fingerprints are there so there are different uh, signals for awake state and drowsy state and for sleepy state so these are like a fingerprint so it's quite possible soon you will have hair band where you put it and uh, you can monitor a person or monitor whether a student is sleeping in the class so it will beep things when he gets some particular signal and then you can take care of the student so these signals are the convoluted signal being picked up by the electrode and uh, so if you feed this signal to the body the body has the power to de convolute it and can do a fourier transform is called when you decon and you find the component of each this is this frequency with the amplitude this if you add this you get this frequency so here it is something like this here i have shown here that this frequency plus this frequency plus this frequency when you add it you get this net so your electroencephalograph actually record this frequency and it has three frequency component so if you have like this it will uh, if you do a fourier transform or if you uh, decompose this frequency into pure frequencies pure sinusoidal frequencies then you get this and the body the cell has the capability because as we saw in uh, first lecture in the protein folding case and all that you have different resonant state and this has a signature what is to be carried out by the body so here you can see that you know you have different tone here and even your cellular organelles cell membrane and microtubules they will all have their own natural frequency so once you put this signal then the body knows what is to be done so here i have shown here that you have a sinusoidal here and this single one frequency but you have two sinusoidal superimposed you have two frequency and this kind of signal has many frequencies so hearing sound is also very interesting that is when you 
hear this kind of noisy frequency sound then ear has a capability to separate out the component frequencies via this you know hair cell or basilar membrane so it separates out each component and it has been sent to the brain so thus brain gets information that is already broken down by frequency so once the brain knows okay this frequency this is amplitude that other frequency this is amplitude so brain make a picture of the sound when i say picture means some pattern and brain recognize this is and this happens you know the brain learns slowly so we will come to this point also in next few slides so all these organs eyes nose skin they separate the wave signal into frequency component and send it to the respective portion of the brain so the brain understand this pattern so if visual smelling feeling these are all different pattern in different areas of the brain so as i said this kind of headgears have already come these are the mobile electroencephalogram systems and here you see with such cap okay a person is playing a game he sees here and he thinks that i should shoot this a cannon here and there's a plane line that i should shoot this one so he just thinks and this message is passed through internet and this person it clicks and there's a very good success rate so you have a brain stimulus using these are some toroidal magnet so it is a transcranial magnetic stimulus okay this is called tms so this experiment has also been done you can see it in internet and these are some paper conscious brain to brain communication in humans using non invasive technology so such experiment have also been done so he is just seeing and thinking how to move this to play this one and this person he gets he sends a signal and this person really moves this up and down okay so this also has been uh, done verified and here you see you in very interesting thing that this is your fly trap or we in a fly trap and if, when a fly comes it just shuts and this is your in common language we say touch me not okay so you see here it triggers this fly trap and the signal goes and the signal is transmitted to this touch me not plant now let me introduce fractal world which is important because what is a fractal fractal is a geometrical object that is similar to itself on all length scale okay this property is called the self similarity so if you zoom it will be same again you zoom further it will be same so in nature this is useful so suppose you you know some portion of your say memory is lost so because of the fractal nature of the neurons and also there are hierarchical structures so it's quite possible that the uh, this information is spread everywhere so even small portion will recover the full so even if some local damage is done it can be rectified okay so here i have shown some quantum transport in this you know fractal so here this photons are localized so you see very bright light and some delocalized place okay and then again here photons are localized so there are bright and dark patterns are there so this kind of pattern or firing of the neuron so this pattern is been realized by the brain and that gives you the information so this kind of pattern firing pattern is observed in brain which can be due to smell can be due to vision okay so these are the way uh, our brain works and this is the way most likely we feel that the brain works and to show more fractalness in nature so this tree here i have shown tree here there are rivers okay they have a fractalness so there are as i had said that if you zoom in and zoom it will be same structure okay here you see this spiral thing is same as you zoom in this flower so in nature you will have lot of this fractal kind of structure and this here i have shown here that this interesting property of fractal that it obeys some fibonacci sequence that is you add two consecutive number 1 plus 1 gives you 2 then 2 plus 1 gives you 3 then 3 plus 2 gives you 5 5 plus 3 gives you this is a fibonacci sequence so fractal is somewhat related to this fibonacci sequence also is a mystical number so this kind of geometrical pattern you see in nature and here you see even heart you have a fractalness so this is a lungs this is kidney this is heart and these are the neurons so here also different hierarchical structures are there and here i show you this is your neuron network and see your neural plasticity this neuron moves from here or this arrow you see it moves this one and joins so it always tries to reconnect so whenever you are thinking continuous brain activities go, goes on this as i said this plasticity 
and also vesicle are transported. So here I show how the action potential propagates. And here you can see these uh, synapses are joining. So rewiring is all the time taking place as and when uh, you have new experience, new thinking, new thoughts. So new rewirings are being adjusted. And here I say since a fractal is a geometric object that is similar to itself on all scales self similar so loss of some portions still have full geometrical information. This is the recovery of the memory. And here I have shown here you have neuron and you have these uh, waves. And the neurons actually respond that there are periods of time when a given neuron responds to one stimulus and other period of time where it responds to other stimulus. Okay. So it is not that only it responds to one stimulus, it can some other time it will respond to other stimulus. So it does a multitasking kind of job. And in this slide, I want to show how decision is being made. So this is a Leibniz experiment and uh, you have a, there is a X axis a time scale and this is your EEG signal and this is your dopamine level in nanomolar. So here you see it is this is the action performed and you have an intention to do that action and but interestingly that before making an intention there is something getting built up. So that means what you are going to do is already been decided before you had an intention to do it. Okay, so here you see this is a EEG signal and this is a signal of firing rate of the neuron. So and this is the signal of a dopamine level. And now there are technologies by which you can measure this kind of signal very accurately when the action is performed and when the intention and this build up is very interesting. That's why question mark is being. So I think physical factor like memory, learning, experience in the brain. So you start, you know, thinking you have not made intention, but your experience experience memory starts developing to do what then you with that result you have an intention and you perform an act. So here I have written I think physical factor like memory learning experience in the brain are involved before decision making and this is a rational thinking and it appears as if there is no free will and uh, this is the steps like you know for any action to be taken like you first initiate then your intention and willingness and then you make a decision then you execute and that phenomena happens. Okay. Okay, this is the seek. So this nowadays can be measured in lab. So some question arise now, why did you do what you did? What was the intention? Is it a free will? So this can be addressed that you did it because of sensory environment or hormonal level or your mood was not very good, stress level, your culture, genetics and rational thinking. So incorporation of all above leads one to make a decision. So it seems there is no free will. So if there is no free will, then some social issue comes. Is he responsible for any decision which hurts or damage other? So should you punish? Are we simply biological machine? When car loses his brake control or a mentally unbalanced guy while driving hurts somebody, then the fault has to be repaired. So these are the points which I wanted to mention and then social and health obligation. So if suppose you say there is no free will, then can change happen in me if there is no free will? Yes, it can. Change by surroundings, what your surrounding, how the surrounding is. Accepting change is possible. That is the first step towards, you know, change. Then optimism, thinking you can make a difference and interaction of environment and biology the knowledge and thrive to be a better person. So this point questions free will. Now let me put some more points on thought that some thoughts on thought. So what is thought? Thought as interrogation. Thought can be decision making. Thought can be concept of time, aesthetic, reasoning. Okay. These are the question. How do you think? What to think about? Remembering one name spontaneously. Is it thinking? You remember something or spontaneously recognizing an object, you say it is thinking like spontaneously recognizing of objects such as table, chair, wall, cupboard. Okay, so this you have just simply recognized it. So one can say brain states are the mind states. So brain, this is a chemical state and these mind states are the thoughts. So the brain activities are electrochemical reaction and thoughts. So thoughts are also electrochemical reaction. Here, brain does not distinguish between processing and out. So whatever your thoughts are processing, that itself is an out. So processing itself are thoughts. So we know that brain makes mind and brain is nothing but these are wiring and firing and this mind is thought. So question arises, is there a conductor or it forms on its own? Is there some location in the brain or some conductor? So these are very interesting questions. Thoughts from memory or from sensory organs are indistinguishable when measured. What I mean to say here that you, if you 
you can fantasize that will also look very real when you are hallucinated you look real you are not uh, using your sensory organ when you are dreaming it looks very real so it is indistinguishable here i say in orchestra melody is the emergence property of interacting musician so similarly thoughts is an interaction of cells or rather i will say electrical pattern form in brain and also it is interesting to know that you think so that your thoughts can die instead of you example like animal things by moving and one wrong move can kill it so your thinking process is somewhat related to your survival so you think so that even if your thought dies at least you are safe and here something very interesting is learning versus understanding unlearning is possible but ununderstanding is not possible and what is emotion emotion is nothing but brain body interaction feedback thoughts so one can say that thought is due to memory memory comes from knowledge and knowledge comes from experience and we know that uh, modulo oblongata controls the autonomic nervous system which controls all the portion of the body this is involuntary reaction so it appears that it also may control the brain and why we say this because the medulla oblongata is a home to all ascending and descending tracts that carry communication between the brain and the spinal cord also house within the medulla oblongata are a number of important center that sorts relay and modulate variety of activities necessary for the maintenance of self regulating process by which an organism tends to maintain stability while adjusting to con- condition that are best for its survival and we know that chemical messenger that is neurotransmitters are used to communicate within the autonomic nervous system hence medulla oblongata may have a main role in activating thought process along with the sense because they control all the involuntary autonomic nervous system okay so here i show some nature has made some smart material here there is a piece of heart in a petri dish still you know without brain or without any a signal this is a beating and here some scientists have grown um, from a stem cell and sesam size heart and this is the beating and here you see some neurons are growing and firing in a petri dish so these are always active so looking for some connection but unfortunately they are in petri dish so here i would like to mention some more points on thoughts so the difference between physical world and psychological world so physical world is say deterministic or say random so if it is either there is no free will and in psychological world one talks about consciousness and it seems like free will or is it simply judgment and here i would like to make a point to survive one cannot afford to be a stupid learning from the past is important changing decision at last moment is so is free will an illusion we also know that free will is lost in a hypnotic state which is a sort of unconsciousness now brain or mind activities interacting with body that is self an environment back and forth along with cognitive thought in synchronous leads to we come back to the first point so all this argument leads to the first question we raise that is thought as interrogation decision making concept of time aesthetic and reasoning and uh, quantum mechanics is randomness hence free will cannot be obtained from quantum mechanics now let us raise some point on consciousness what is consciousness is awareness of environment and self feeling is a computation one has to remember what you are adding to what example computing your movement then emergence of subjective experience from the objective measurable phenomena so these are some of the definitions of consciousness so are all these simply response which can be measured through brain body activities this is a question and is consciousness simply a simulation by brain simulating speech smell vision hearing learning understanding feeling including the above four points these four points or is consciousness simply a flow of pattern of information measured along with flow of time on the basis of my subjectivity so one can say conscious experience is an emergent property of functional information processing now i would like to say something about hallucinogen so here one can say that hallucinogen chemical affect individuals mental state and its increasing dose may lead to out of body ex- experience this is ob as a bystander watching themselves from another point in the room so here you see out of body experience so you may feel you know near near that out of body or even hallucination sometime you feel that you have come out of the body so it is just a, a chemical effect in individuals mental state okay or rewiring is taking place due to this chemical effects and psychedelic drugs some people take to become high or to trip it works by 
by disrupting communication between chemical system throughout the spinal cord and brain. It interferes with neurotransmitters that send signal to the brain and nerves, which may lead to a bad and traumatic. So you can have a very bad experience. It's not that always you will have a very good experience. Okay, and of course the experience depends on the setting. A person taking such drug. Okay, so this all this self hypnosis, psychedelic, placebo, meditation. These are all just chemical effect which are acting on the brain, and you. Uh, go into hallucination and also you you can go to such a state that uh, you feel near death out of body experience so when a person is near death they feel out of body experience so and i will show in the concluding uh, slide that uh, mammalian brain do contain psychedelic drug they can generate psychedelic drug so maybe near death person that that concentration of drug can increase in the brain so i will give you the reference on that so here i show some of the psychedelics and this is the serotonin which is there we have and serotonin is a chemical that carries message between nerve cells in the brain and throughout your body serotonin plays a key role in such a body function as mood sleep digestion nausea wound healing so this is a very important compound in our body but very similar compound which mimics and your receptors this uh, serotonin receptors uh, this molecule can also fit because this shape is similar to here and this is a uh, silokin this is your dmt this is psychedelic this is your lsd and this is psilocybin which you get tremendous amount in uh, mushrooms so this is a paper in nature medicine which claims that increased global integration in the brain after psilocybin therapy for depression so for depressive people you take this drug and of course these are addictive and uh, just to elevate the depression people have seen some brain wiring gas change so this mushroom have this psilocybin compound in it so consuming this mushroom also people can have psychedelic effect now i would like to discuss uh, plasticity of neurons in the brain there are three phases of plasticity so when it is too, when you are too young this is a pre critical period the initial formation of neuronal circuit that is not dependent on experience so when you are too young when you are just born so experience you do not know what experience so this is the pre critical period so neurons are formed then there is a critical period a distinct onset of robust plasticity in response to experience when the initial form circuits can be modified by experience so this circuit which are initially been formed now it can be modified so here rewiring takes place then the third phase is closure of critical period that is after the end of a critical period the same experience no longer elicits the same degree of plasticity means if you experience the same thing again then it doesn't rewire so first you initially have all the wires then with experience you rewire and once you repeat the experience you need not rewire this is what it is and based on this idea, idea uh, david and torsten mm, they did an experiment on kitten they have shut one eye and for some time uh, and then they found after a few months that uh, there were abnormally low number of neurons reacting in the eye in the the eye which was closed and abnormally high number in the other eye so you see this rewiring can change if you do not experience as soon as a animal is born and if you shut one of the eye then the vision of that eye becomes weak so this is the experiment to just go through it now i would like to talk about uh, paramecium a swimming neuron so you have this paramecium you put it in a capillary tube and there is a dead end in one of the capillary tube so it will go to a dead end and then he knows that it cannot escape so it will again move back and it will escape but the first trial it takes more time in second trial it does fast so it improves the quality see here mean escape speed so the speed increases with number of trials okay so one can ask if the cytoskeleton is a nervous system of protozoa what might it do for the neurons and parishion manages it without any synaptic connections and these are some reference where attempts to retreat a dead end along capillary this is a graph taken from this reference so in this slide we will show that the paramecium can be trained so this is a whole paper cutting and here the test is that you put a needle this paramecium will not come near needle but if once you put a bacteria coated paramecium will come to eat but then again you clean this bacteria and put it again in the petri dish again the paramecium thinking that there will be back 
bacteria on this needle so they get trained and in this slide now we will like to discuss some intelligence of slime mold so this is a slime mold is a fungus like thing and the interesting thing is that it can find the shortest path from one point of food to another point so here you see this slime mold is here and the food is kept here this is a oat and eventually it will find the this is the shortest path so similarly here you see what they have have done experiment is you have a slime mold here and they have kept this oat in such a way that it resembles the Tokyo railway line and you put the mold here and mold searches it and then it makes the shortest path and this path this is the slime mold made a path which almost resembles that of a Tokyo railway lines so sort of it is doing like a traveling salesman problem and uh, this is how is their life cycle i will not go into detail much here now so for completeness sake i will like to discuss some of the nervous systems in smaller organism so here you see nerve nets so this uh, is a jellyfish and it is your nerve cells are distributed like a ring and also in the body so it is distributed all over and this is an earthworm it has a ring like structure and long hair and these are some of the nerves for the earthworm and for hydra it is all along the body these nerve nets are there and this is uh, for the starfish you have a central ring here nerve ring and each tentacles have this uh, brain it is almost similar to what octopus have each tentacle so like octopus have nine brain eight brains in each of the tentacle and one between the two eyes so it is very similar so many organism have many brains and just for completeness uh, I would like to say this uh, very interesting properties of microtubules and you see here also it is a you know very hierarchical fractal like structure here so here you see neurons are like this arranged and here microtubule also similarly looks like a very similar fashion okay and uh, in microtubules also as you we have discussed about this frolic condensate in our first lecture when protein folding that there should be vibrational effect within active cells and which would resonate with microwave electromagnetic radiation at 10 to power 11 as a result of biological quantum long-range coherence phenomena so this we had discussed in lecture one please go back to that lecture and try to understand this phenomena so tubulin protein in the microtubule is the best candidate and these are the tubulin protein this tubulin alpha protein and tubulin beta protein say and the charge here can tunnel from this uh, tubulin blob to this one and this occurs at almost 10 to the power 11 that's 10 to the minus 11 second that is 10 to the power 11 hertz and this coherent microtubule excitation leads to frolic bose einstein condensation and may even exhibit a kind of non-locality that occurs with EPR phenomena. What is this EPR? Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen phenomena. That is uh, action at a distance. So this non-locality, some action taking here at long distance, they, are, they can be in an entangled state in like in EPR. So in this slide, I would like to make some point on this cytoskeleton. So what we learn from the case of single cellular paramecium, it appears that its cytoskeleton plays a role of its nervous system. So does this mean that each neurons of our nervous system have its own personal nervous system? Because the paramecium could make decision to turn back, I have a decision to have food, to mate. So these are the things which a paramecium is doing, a uh, unicellular organism doing is something like it has it these microtubules are they like a nervous system and it is interesting to know that when anesthetic gas diffuses into nerve cells it affects the electric dipole property of tubulin and thereby interrupt the action of the microtubules so actually what happens when you put an anesthesia so it affects the microtubules so they can dislodge say kinase so microtubules get uh, disturbed and this is in general how the anesthesia aesthetics operates okay so it is interesting to note that even a paramecium or amoeba or even a green slime mold is similarly affected by the same anesthetic gas at about the same kind of concentration. So definitely we can conclude that it is the microtubule which gets affected in this anesthetic process. So this is not to say that such one cell animals need be considered to be conscious. And here I point out that consciousness is knocked out as soon as the cytoskeleton is disturbed 
inhibited it instantly returns as soon as the dipole property is restored a question then arises as to whether a paramecium or an individual human liver cell might actually possess some rudimentary form of consciousness so this suggests that it is not just the neuronal organization of a brain that is important the cytoskeletal also seems to be essential for brain activities so here the ingenuity that is found in biology it seems nature have found biological ways to harness quantum world exploiting its nanoscale structure and so mind thoughts can arise in such description only if there is some form of quantum coherence extending across an appreciable part of the brain so this quantum effect is also useful for our thought process now this is a slide taken from lecture 2 to show that how this paramecium shows some intelligence that they are mating here and this is your unicellular stentor and when some polystyrene ball is been uh, injected it gets disturbed and leaves the place so as if he is taking decision to leave and here you see this is more remarkable he grabs a foot so far away so the question that is it intelligence that even you see that you know uh, plants they talk among each other they plant gives nutrient to the the mother plant give nutrients to the daughter plants and these are some mycelium or this is a root and this is coming out from mushroom this roots and they are also communicating through the roots of the mushroom and uh, this is also very interesting phenomena and people are working extensively to understand this phenomena and here i have shown one wasp you know how it injects uh, some toxin in the brain of a cockroach and make the cockroach zombie and the fellow poor fellow been dragged and taken uh, to its nest and uh, so this also appears as if some intelligent work is going on and here a wasp has laid egg inside this caterpillar and these eggs are now coming out and interesting thing is that there are some caterpillars even take care of these uh, eggs they make a cocoon around it and the wasp uh, comes out of it and this is shows how you know social colony of jellyfish and here you see this is an octopus where it camouflaging and so this also appears as if they have some intelligence to change the uh, color of their skin and here there is a cuttlefish trying to threaten the opponent and here i saw this spider how intelligently whether one can say weaving the net now this is my last slide and my conclusions are as below here i say does free will have any meaning because nature has designed human through evolutionary process providing mechanism for rational cognitive thinking memory learning capabilities and above all experience so similarly if involuntary sympathetic action take place automatically so where does consciousness fits in so is consciousness along with free will an illusion this is the question which i pose are all life form controlled by genes are in default autopilot mode so what do i mean by default autopilot mode we have seen in this lecture that from unicellular organism to multicellular like plants and animal they appear to show some level of intelligence but i think genes have blueprint for organism behavior and they even have checklist and what condition and what uh, situation how what is to be done and i have not talked here about epigenetics in epigenetics the gene interacts with the surrounding environment and can get modified so according to me in the evolutionary process the gene evolved and genes dictates the behavior property of a living organism so since the genes decides the behavior of an organism so one can say it is in an autopilot mode and it is said default because it is genetic in nature so in positive note humans can hack the autopilot mode by training their self that's why human can do things differently than other life forms and i feel quantum effect plays a very important role in the field of biology which we have discussed regarding protein folding dna rna folding and many other properties which we have seen note earlier i had mentioned in this lecture that presence of naturally occurring hallucinogenic psychedelic compound in the mammalian brain has been observed so this is the reference given published in nature that brain in the mammal can synthesize this dmt which is a psychedelic compound and that's why in a very stressful condition like near that one goes to a psychedelic state and can have out of body experience so thank you i finish the three part lecture series here and wait for another series of talk please subscribe my channel for latest updates and notifications thanks